On October 27, 1838, Missouri Governor Lilburn Boggs released Executive Order No. 44 and mustered 2,500 state militia to put down a Mormon insurrection against the state. The order simply stated that the Mormon population had to get out of the state of Missouri or face extermination. Hello everyone, I'm Julian Gower, and if you're new here, I get out and about and I go explore and learn the history surrounding the Kansas-Missouri border. And this week I visited Liberty, Missouri and the jail that housed Mormon prophet Joseph Smith in 1838. And I learned about the history of violence that surrounded the Mormons in Missouri. But before we get into it, I wanted to let everyone know that this is not a video about the Mormon religion, about their beliefs or doctrine. I'm not a Mormon and I don't know much about their religion. This video is about the conflict between the Mormons and the non-Mormon Missouri settlers and it was prompted by my visit to the Old Liberty Jail. So what happened? How did these two groups of settlers get to the point where one of them was banished from the state? Let's go check it out. Joseph Smith was a prophet and the founder of Mormonism, also known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And in 1830, he published the Book of Mormon, and it gained a substantial following. The home base for the church was in Kirtland, Ohio, but in 1831, Smith proclaimed that the site of New Jerusalem was in Jackson County, Missouri, and that the town of Independence was the center place of Zion, the Garden of Eden. And towards the end of 1831, many Mormons began to start settling in Independence. The non-Mormon citizens did not like people moving into the area who did not hold the same political, cultural, or religious ideas that they did, and tensions started to grow quickly. According to understandingmormonism.org, the reason the Mormons were looked at with suspicion was they were poor, their religious differences stirred up prejudices, their eastern customs and dialect were alien to the Missourians, they opposed slavery, and Missouri was a big old slave state, and they believed that the Native Americans were God's chosen people destined to inherit the land of Missouri. And many people believed that the Mormons were going to aid the slaves and the Native Americans in rebellion and help them inherit that land that they owned. On July 20th, four to 500 non-Mormon Missouri citizens met at the courthouse in Independence where they determined that no more Mormons were going to be allowed in the area and any Mormons that were already in the area, they had to leave the county. The situation escalated and the non-Mormon settlers quickly turned into a mob and they destroyed the Mormon printing office and the press in Independence. On July 23rd, the mob returned, but this time they burned Mormon fields and destroyed Mormon homes. Six leaders of the Mormon church offered their lives in exchange for the safety of the rest of the members. Their offer was turned down and they were forced to sign an agreement that they would be out of the county by April 1st, 1834. The Mormons complied and moved north of the Missouri River into Clay and Ray counties and tensions eased until 1836 when Joseph Smith relocated the headquarters of the church that had been in Kirtland, Ohio to a new settlement called Far West in what was then Ray County. And with that, there was an influx of Mormons and tensions began again. On December 29, 1836, Governor Lilburn Boggs signed a bill that made Ray County three counties, Ray, Caldwell, and Davies. And it was with the understanding that Caldwell County was specifically for Mormon settlement. A new settlement of Far West had just been created and that was just north of a strip of land called Bunkman's Strip. This three mile strip was a no man's land. No one was allowed to settle there. It was a barrier between the Mormons and the citizens of Ray County. There was also a three mile strip to the north that separated Caldwell from Davies County. On May 19, 1838, Smith formally revealed his belief that the site Adam on Aham was the place where Adam and Eve went after being exiled from the Garden of Eden. He said it would be a gathering place on the Judgment Day, and according to the Latter-day Saints tradition, this site is to be a gathering spot prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, the problem here is that this was in Davies County, not in Caldwell County, and before too long, the Mormon population around there began to reach a level where they could determine election results in the county. 
That did not sit well with the non-Mormon settlers. It made them nervous and agitated. And you see, the Mormons were supposed to stay in Caldwell County, but they didn't. They settled in the counties all around there, and many saw this as a break in the agreement with the government. On July 4th, Sidney Rigdon, who was one of the church leaders, gave an Independence Day speech in front of Mormons and non-Mormons, and in it he declared that the Latter-day Saints would no longer be driven from their homes by persecution. And that mob that comes on us to disturb us, it shall be between us and them a war of extermination, for we will follow them until the last drop of their blood is spilled, or else they will have to exterminate us, for we will carry the seat of war to their own houses and their own families, and one party or the other shall be utterly destroyed. And as well you can imagine, non-Mormons took this as a direct threat. On August 6, 1838, about 200 non-Mormons in the town of Gallatin in Davies County tried to prevent Mormons from voting and electing their candidate. It all stemmed from a local politician who spewed anti-Mormon sentiment during his campaign. He riled up the non-Mormon population. A brawl ensued. No one was hurt physically, but tempers were brewing. This is considered the first conflict in what would be called the 1838 Mormon War. A man named Henry Root, who was a non-Mormon, sold his town named of DeWitt to the church. Now, this property was in Carroll County, and the church tried to settle it. Some Carroll County citizens didn't want the Mormons there, so they tried to intimidate them. They took some families hostages. They burned barns. Joseph Smith begged the settlers to come back to Far West, but they refused. On September 20th, about 150 armed men rode into DeWitt and demanded that the Mormons leave within 10 days. Carroll County forces sealed off the town, but the Mormons were able to send for assistance to Governor Boggs, and on October 6th, General Parks arrived with the Ray County Militia, but his order to disperse was ignored by the mob, and he was forced to withdraw. On October 9th, he returned to DeWitt to report to the Mormons that the governor's response to their plea for help was that the quarrel was between the Mormons and the mob and that they should just fight it out. With no help from the governor, the Mormon leaders agreed to abandon the settlement and headed to far west for protection. On October 18th, a group of Mormon vigilantes known as the Danites attacked three Missourian settlements, Gallatin, Millport, and Grindstone Fork. The Mormons plundered the property and burned the stores and houses. The Davies County seat of Gallatin, where the Election Day brawl took place, was completely gutted. A militia under the command of Samuel Bogart was ordered to patrol the no-man's land between Ray and Caldwell counties. Instead of staying in the strip, he passed into Caldwell County and began to harass Mormons. Mormon leaders were told that the militia had taken Mormon prisoners, and an armed party was quickly gathered to attempt a rescue. The state militia was camped along Crooked River in the Buncombe Strip, just south of Caldwell County. According to RayCountyMuseum.org, the Mormon Rescue Company approached from the north along the main road. At daybreak on the 25th, the Mormons encountered the militia's sentries. A brief firefight ensued with each side testifying that the other had fired first. The Mormon Company approached the camp of the Ray County Militia and formed a battle line in three columns led by David W. Patton, Charles C. Rich, and Patrick Dufry. A general firefight commenced, but the militia was situated behind the riverbank and held the strategic superior position. Patton decided to charge the militia position, shouting the Mormon battle cry of God and Liberty. The Missourians were without swords and so broke their lines and fled across the river in all directions. The Mormons suffered three fatalities and eight wounded, the Missourians one killed and one wounded. On October 27, 1838, after sticking his head in the sand way too long to be able to control the situation, Governor Lilburn Boggs signed Missouri Executive Order No. 44, and that order stated, The Mormons must be treated as enemies and must be exterminated or driven from the state if necessary for the public peace. 
He then mustered 2,500 state militia to put down what he perceived to be a Mormon insurrection against the state. And here's an interesting fact. That order was not rescinded until June 25th, 1976. On October 30th, 1838, 240 men approached Hans Mill. Now this was a Mormon settlement in Caldwell County and it had a mill, a blacksmith shop, and a few homes. There were about 20 to 30 families that lived near the mill and another hundred families that lived in the surrounding area. Many of the women and children were able to escape into the woods, but those who stayed were met with 1,600 bullets in an attack that lasted 30 minutes. Anyone left alive after the attack was shot dead, and that sadly included three children under the age of 12. All in all, 17 Mormons died. Acting on the governor's executive order, a Missouri army lay siege on Far West. Joseph Smith, Sidney Rigdon, Lyman White, Parley P. Pratt, and George Robinson all surrendered to the army in hopes of saving the town and the citizens. But once the leaders were gone, the militia ransacked the town, they confiscated all of the arms, and they looted and burnt the property. Smith and the other leaders were taken to Liberty, where Smith was quickly tried and illegally condemned to death. Alexander William Donovan, who was a brigadier general in the Missouri militia and present at the trial, refused to carry out the order to kill Smith and saved his life. The five leaders were charged with treason against the state, murder, arson, burglary, robbery, and larceny, and they spent the next five months prisoners in the Liberty Jail during a very, very frigid Missouri winter. And this is the jail I went to see that led me to this story. This jail was built in 1833 and it was used until 1856. It is 22 feet square and has two levels. The inner and outer walls together are four feet thick and loose rock was placed between the walls to thwart any attempt at burrowing through. They even put rocks up there in the attic. The jailer occupied the upper floor and the lower section was used to house the prisoners and was accessed through a trap door from the upper floor. There were two narrow windows that were two feet wide and six inches high with iron bars and that was supposed to provide fresh air and the cold. Joseph Smith called it the pit. He wrote, we are kept under a strong guard night and day. Our food is scant uniform and coarse. We have not the privilege of cooking for ourselves. We have been compelled to sleep on the floor with straw and not blankets sufficient to keep us warm. And when we have a fire, we are obliged to have almost a constant smoke. They did attempt to escape twice, but they failed. On April 6, 1839, an armed guard escorted the prisoners from the jail in Liberty to their trial in Boone County but they never made it. The guards allowed them to escape. Joseph Smith and the others escaped to Illinois, never to return to Missouri. The rest of the church that was here in the state of Missouri were driven out and they found sanctuary in Nauvoo, Illinois, where Smith became the mayor. However, he used his influence to have a newspaper that was critical of his teachings destroyed. He and his brother Hiram were arrested and were charged with treason and conspiracy. They were awaiting trial when on June 27, 1844, a mob stormed in and murdered both Hiram and Joseph Smith. Five men were later tried for Smith's murder, but they were all acquitted. The Missouri-Kansas border area is full of incredible history like this. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button. It helps out my little bitty channel so much. And if you really like this video, why don't you go ahead and subscribe because you never know what I'm going to dig up next. I hope you guys have a spectacular day. I will see you next week.